It's the Springfield Sports Hall of Fame, the 20th annual banquet tonight, and we're speaking with guest speaker Nancy Lopez. Nancy, you know a thing or two. <laughs> I told you she was already making me blush. Thanks, man. Way to play along. All right, the first pitch out here at Landfair Park. It's going to be a blast tonight. It's doubleheader action. Du Bois and oh, game ball for me. So the celebration continues, but it's going to be short because now it's on to New York, where the Cardinals will be underdogs once again to the heavily favored Mets. Good evening and welcome to the Saturday night mini blitz. Three teams left alive in the state football playoffs heading into today, and we got to all three. I think it's safe to say that points will be at a premium tonight when SIU takes on Holy Cross. And that's just fine with the Salukis. <laughs> Foil fencing the target is only this portion of the body, right here, oh. the back, and this groin area. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, that's good, yeah. yeah. The groin so, area is yeah. involved. The groin area is a could target. Be oh! I got that one, right? Yeah. Before we go, we know what you guys do, and it's like, oh, 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 Good morning, everyone. A day after giving this one a ton of pub, I finally got my days right and got to cover the Class 2A Super Sectional between St. Teresa and Robinson. The winner of this one heads to Peoria this weekend as one of the final four in the state. Illinois recruit Myers Leonard plays for the Maroons all seven feet of him, and that meant a special visit by head coach Bruce Weber, a member of the sellout crowd on hand. First half, Coach Webb got to see how St. T does it. Bulldogs Brennan McElroy with the drive. St. Teresa up eight. Then more from the dogs. Drew Burrows dribbles into the paint. The off-balance shot falls. St. T led by a deuce at halftime. Second half. Leonard gets involved in a big way. The lob inside, he'll lay it up and in. This game's tied. Still in the third. Leonard inside. Misses his first attempt. Rebound slam. Wow. <laughs> Robinson by five. But he wasn't the Maroons' most dangerous weapon. That distinction goes to Ben Jones. That rolls in. The and one. 29 for him. Robinson quickly up 14. Bulldogs not going quietly. Not when you have Nick Sanford. Dribbles into the lane. Gets the dunk. He had 18 to lead St. T. But Leonard was a man-child in the fourth. Another bucket and foul, and then on the break, he's going to have the slam of the season. The seven-footer with the ability to leap tall buildings, or in this case, St. T's Matt Moran. Leonard finishes with 23. That finishes St. T's season at 29 and two. Robinson advances 81-60. Our kids never quit. I mean, that's what this group through and through the whole time they've been at St. T, and you know, we just thanked them. To, hey, you did a great job all four years. It's hard. We've accomplished a lot as a team, and uh, I'm just so proud of everybody on our team. And happy we had a chance to play against a tough team. And they had a lot of big athletic guys. Sometimes, you know, it's just average size kids, but I mean, they had that Sanford kid, they brought that 40 in, they were being very physical. And, you know, I'm used to it, but nothing like that. Lincoln and Southeast meet in the sectional tomorrow night. The winner faces either Centennial or Muhammad Seymour on Friday. How about the Chargers, Ravante Rice? Yeah, the defending state champs are the defending state champs for a reason. Gets the bucket, quickly 10-5. Mohamed Sino Moore did have some luck, though, in the first half. They played the slowdown game. This is Ryan Ohm, gets the bucket to go. He scored nine of the first 11. It was just a four-point game, but then Centennial gets hot. Rice on the outside. He hits the three, it makes it 18-9 in favor of the Chargers. Then Rice again goes up and gets it right before half. It's 22-11 Centennial. Then in the third, it's Rice on defense. The block gets the drive started. He'll look ahead to Tiger O'Neill. Slam it home, Tiger. Centennial leads by 15, and then they're cruising. Rice would finish with 23 points. He outscored Muhammad Seymour by five. Centennial winner, 43 to 18. On the girls' side, the Route Catholic basketball team finally gathered in front of the hometown faithful to celebrate their second place finish in Class 1A. The Lady Rocket seniors had plenty to cheer about considering they made it to the state finals in three of their four years on the team. Second place is really awesome. It was a great accomplishment and uh, we've had a lot of great accomplishments over the years too. So just the accumulation of everything, it, it's really nice. Second state, I mean, so many teams would wish that they were in the position that we were in this year. You couldn't ask for anything better. The team that we had was awesome and just supportive and everything and I love the team. The experience was awesome. It's so amazing to end our senior year like this. It, I couldn't ask for anything more. All righty, that's going to do it for Morning Sports. I'm Brian Bowes. Have yourselves a great day. Chatham's Kelsey Bryant only dove one year while she was a student at Glenwood High School. Then it was off to pursue her dreams of making the Olympics. It appears dreams do come true, even if the path that takes you there is a little rocky.
We don't talk about that when they Free come kitten. to get them. Free take this one. 19-year-old Kelsey Bryant seems like your average, ordinary teenager until you see her dive. Yes. Bryant and partner Ariel Rittenhouse are in Beijing, China tonight, preparing for Sunday's three-meter synchronized diving competition. That's a long way from CS8 Swimmer of the Year, and it didn't come without sacrifice. It was definitely hard, like I never went to prom or I didn't go to, you know, normal high school functions. I was always at practice. Kelsey and her mom moved after her freshman year of high school in order for her to train. That meant leaving the rest of the family behind. She doesn't even live with the rest of my family like she lives with me and she's away from my dad all the time. So I couldn't have done it, you know, without my parents and I mean, going through all that change and everything, like, it was hard. She's given up a lot and I've seen... I've seen what she's given up because I'm the one that lives with her, so I kind of know it's hard to miss prom, it's hard not to go shopping for prom dresses. Even the first year she didn't go to high school, everybody was shopping for school clothes, and she didn't get to do that. So the path has had plenty of twists and turns, and now Kelsey's hoping it leads her to an Olympic medal. It's kind of like we found out, and that was one part of the goal, and now the goal is to get a medal, so we just are focused on that now. I think the diving is one thing, but I know that she really understands uh, how important it is to be a representative of the United States at this meet. I think I'm as proud of her for understanding that, and, and she will represent the United States very well. Kelsey and her partner have a pretty mm -hmm. good shot at winning a medal. They've taken wow. bronze in, in international competition before, That's great. and there's already talk of 2012. An yeah. inspiring story today out of Auburn, where a 13-year-old boy with brittle bone disease had his dream fulfilled thanks to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And Brian Bose was there this morning to help let the cat out of the bag. All right, guys, here's the deal. We're out here at Auburn High School where 13-year-old Ryan Wilson has no idea how this day is going to end. We do, and we're about to let him know. First of all, the school calls a fake assembly to get Ryan and the rest of the student body into the gymnasium. Second, they invite me along to tell Ryan he gets to meet his hero today. Thirdly, he hops on a Hummer limousine that takes him to the airport so he can meet Shaq. And lastly, he gets to meet the big fella. Up top for Shaq! Oh, how gorgeous was that? Keep in mind that Ryan, the students, and almost everyone in attendance have no idea what's going on. They just think we're there to interview him for a story on the Make-A-Wish Foundation. So we had to ask a few fake questions before we spilled the beans. How big of a thrill would it be for you to actually get to meet the big guy? That would be awesome. That'd be really cool. Uh, I'd probably fall on the ground and be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> After a few minutes, it was time to let everyone in on the secret. We do have a gift for you for doing this. A mini basketball. We got you a magazine, a slam magazine. It's got Shaquille and LeBron. Got you a pair of Sharpies. Thank you. Do you know what you need those Sharpies for? Writing. Yeah, you do need them to write because you'll probably want Shaquille O'Neal to sign that magazine and that ball because there's a limousine waiting outside right now. You're meeting them today, buddy. <laughs> Here comes mom and dad. Did I surprise you? Yeah, you surprised me very good. <laughs> I didn't even know it was gonna happen. I'm still on shock. <laughs> I got it. Next stop, Cleveland, Ohio. Reporting from Auburn High School, Brian Bose, ABC News Channel 20. Hi again, everyone. One night, Springfield resident Sally Weiskopf sat at her computer and saw that the Cubs were having an open contest, giving one lucky fan a chance to sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game at a game. 1,200 contestants, one tryout, and plenty of online votes later, Sally's one of the 10 finalists. It's not hard finding Sally Weiskopf's office at the Prairie Capital Convention Center. Take me out to the ball game. And as you can see, she bleeds Cubby's blue and red. Heartbreak, determination, never giving up, never ever giving up and believing and just keep believing it's going to happen. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. Now Sally will head up to Chicago for one final tryout against nine others with a chance of a lifetime hanging in the balance. It has been an unbelievable ride. I, I It's been like being a Cub fan. You really can't explain it. It's been uh, out of this world. For its root, root, root for the Cubbies. 
When they announce the winner, Sally hopes it's her. But if it's not, she won't be disappointed. Just to be 10 out of the whole country is amazing. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Let's get some more runs. You should be more excited about this. Why don't you tell this. everybody your joke? No, why don't you tell everybody a joke? This You're better at it. Joke. Actually, joke, real quick. What music do pilgrims listen to? Plymouth Rock. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. You're welcome. All right, that's all our time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again at 10. Have a great night. <laughs>